Okay. Yeah. So this is uh, the appendix A, like the advanced norm five. Yeah, um, I I found it that the, the I found it to be somehow abstract. So in a in a way, as as I go along, you can just feel free to explain any any concept you want to explain into details. You know. Yeah. So um, basically, the the whole idea it's to the whole idea of this appendix is to go deeper in NumPy and sort of try to explain what uh, what 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 it's done in the background. Basically, that is what this uh, chapter is basically about. What are some of the 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 operations that are done at the background that uh, uh, we hardly notice that is it's it's taking place. So it starts by re re reminding us of uh, what NumPy is, which is uh, array computing. Uh, um, it will sort of go details into ND array, like which is the uh, N dimension arrays and more advanced uh, manipulations. So throughout the chapter, he starts by saying that they are, he, will, he will be using a random um, number generator for examples, so which is this. So I, I was also doing some stuff with uh, with the notebook. So the generating random numbers using the default uh, random number generator uh, in the NumPy random model. So if we import NumPy, like uh, import NumPy and then we should run this, it will put uh, the um, so we can easily import NumPy, and we set the seed so that for reproducibility. We have said this uh, previously. Yeah. So the first uh, section of 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 this uh, section is uh, ND and ND array objects. So ND is uh, the n dimension um, array. So the NumPy ND array provides a way to interpret a block of homogeneous type data. So notice homogeneous is very important here. For now, later, uh, we'll look at uh, heterogeneous when the data type is different. But for now, we are looking at uh, homogeneous data type uh, as a multidimensional array object. So how can we interpret uh, this? The, the data type can be like we have seen, it could be floating, it could be it could be integer, it could be boolean, it could be a string. We have, we have seen that previously. So it could be any type of data. So what, what makes NumPy flexible uh, and, and more interesting um, uh, is that every array object is a, uh, is a strided view on a block or, or, of data. So you might, so for example, if we should run this code, it does not copy the actual data, but it, it, it gives us this, uh, uh, indices like we have specified, it gives us that, but it doesn't copy the data itself. So, so this makes uh, NumPy really interesting because it, uh, uh, it's a uh, that is the ND array. It's more than just a chunk of memory or a data type. It also has a striding for me information that enables the array to move through memory using. Uh, memory with uh, uh, like uh, varying step size. So I think I had some um, summary on this here. No, this this is this will come later. This was the if we want to see the the data type like the the, the different types of uh, float, but this will come later. So the strided view, uh, the strided view that he's mentioning, uh, like uh, the ND array's ability to provide different views. Or representations of the same underlying data without actually copying the data. So that is what he meant by the strident, uh, strident view. Because uh, so a strided, a stride is a tuple of integers indicating how many bytes one need to move in memory to go to the next element along a dimension. So so basically, when we are using NumPy, we don't we don't actually know that this striding is what is done at the background level. So basically, that's what this appendix is trying to explain to us that, oh, this has some of the things that is done at the basic level. So um, more, more precisely, the ND array 
internally consists of the following, a, point, uh, a, a pointer to data, uh, that is a block of data in the, in the RAM or in the memory mapped file, the data type or D type describing fixed size uh, value cell in the array and a tuple indicating the array's shape. So, so the shape of the arrays that we are going to work with are always going to be in a, a tuple. They're always going to be a tuple. And we have seen tuple previously. So a, a tuple of strides uh, in TGS indicating the number of, of, of bytes to step in order to advance one element along a dimension. So, so that is a tuple of strides. So like if we want to move from a particular dimension to another, so the, the tuple of strides tells us how many steps we have to, to, to take in order to meet that, or the number of bytes, sorry, the number of bytes in, in terms of memory that has to be um, taken. So this is a, a, an illustration sort of, now we have this ND. This is the ND object, which is the data. And then the D type is the data type. And then the shape is the, the shape of the data, which in a sense could be like the dimension of the data. And we, we it's the dimension of the data and the strides, the strides are like, like like the number of like the number of bytes to steps in uh, in order to move from one uh, element to another along a dimension. So so basically, these are some of the key like uh, uh, elements of a ND object. Yeah. So like, if you have any comments, uh, Kim or any suggestions, feel free to to come in. Yeah. So this is a uh, the numpy uh, the 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 numpy n dimension object. So we mentioned the data type. It could be a float. It could be a boolean. It could be a string, and then the the shape, which basically it's the the dimension, the number of rows and 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 and, and columns, and the strides uh, like the, the 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 steps in bytes that we have to take to move from one uh, point to another along a dimension. So for example, a five by ten array would have a shape like this. Five by ten, which is like uh, sorry, ten by five, like ten rows and five columns. Um, so we we can see if we if we do dot shape, like if we apply the shape function to this, then it gives us the shape of this uh, this uh, nd nd uh, object. So we can see the shape is ten by ten by five. It's a matrix of uh, of uh, ten by five. So uh, then then we have something some some kind of interesting. It was a bit confusion. Which was uh, a type, a typical C order, um, or or a Fortran order. So like the C and F order. So a typical C order, which is like a three by four by five array of float, sixty four, like uh, eighty four bytes. Values has the strides, one sixty, forty and eighty. So the strides we mentioned previously are the number of bytes it has to take to move from one dimension to another. So it's like uh, 160, 40, and, and, and 80. So knowing about the strides can be useful because in general, the larger the strides on a particular axis, the more costly it is to perform. So uh, com computation along that axis. So let's say the, yeah, in a, in a, in a 2D, uh, in a two-dimension uh, array, you know, you have like the, the two axis, which the zero axis in that case will be the, the vertical axis, which will be the the row axis, and then the 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 axis one will be the the horizontal axis, will be, which will be the column axis. Um, but you know we could also work in a three D dimension and, and stuff like that. So this is an example of where when we when we call this uh, uh, ND array, and then we dot we 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 apply the dot stride function, it it gives us the stride of this. Uh, uh, and, the, and this is very important because it helps us to know well, on which axis we want to uh, perform. Um, uh, so it, like basically the more costly it is, like the, the larger the stride, the more costly it is to perform computation on that axis, which if we, um, if we know, uh, then we could choose the most appropriate uh, axis to, to do our computations, which will also save, uh, save us some uh, more memory and speed and efficiency and, and things like this. But a, a typical uh, NumPy user might not be, be exposed to all these things because these are things that are done at the background level that you don't you don't get to see. Yeah, you don't get to see. Mm. Yeah, you, you want to say something? No, 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 no. I just keep keep following you. Yeah. 
Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So he even mentioned this. Why it is rare that a, nomical, uh, a typical NumPy user would be interested in the uh, in the array strides. They are uh, they are needed to construct like zero type, uh, the uh, zero copy array views. So they can also be negative. Like he gives you negative strides, which enables an array to move backward through uh, the memory. Yeah. Yeah, so that's it for the the first the first part. Now we look at the the NumPy uh, data type hierarchy. Um, uh, you 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 can typically you can occasionally have code that needs to check uh, whether an array contains integers, floating point numbers, uh, strings, or or Python objects. Since there are uh, multiple uh, floats, uh, point numbers, like we have float 16, we have float 128, uh, checking that the, the data type is among a list of types would be uh, useful. So uh, fortunately, the, the data type have super classes such as the NP integer floating. You know. So we can, yeah, we can apply this function. If we apply the is uh, sub data type, Function, then it will return to us the type of function it is. Like this is a uh, an example. He created this uh, ND arrays. Like the first one is uh, uh, NP zeros or with uh, dimension ten, um, and then he sets it the data type to be an integer integer of in uh, int sixteen, and then he has as uh, the second data type the second N, uh, array. It's like uh, uh, sets it to float. And then applies this is a sub data type uh, uh, function. Now he's asking this the first data type we, we the first one we uh, array we created in we are we are asking whether it's an integer and then it returns true, which uh, is an integer. And then in the second case we we also ask whether the this float array we created is it uh, floating it returns true. So this is very helpful. It uh, you know, is a uh, way to make us know the type of uh, um, sub data type we are working with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can see all of the parent classes of a specific data type by calling the uh, the type MRO method. Yeah, so when we say MP flow sixty four dot MRO, it gives us all the flow types. So the float types we have, we have float 64, floating, uh, inexact, dot number, dot generic, and, and float, then object. So these are all the possible float types. So in Python, uh, the float is the, like the decimal uh, numbers, right? That's the the float uh, object. Just like doubles in Python, in, in, in R, something like this. Uh, so therefore we have, we, 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 we also have, yeah, we, we've discussed this previously. So uh, most NumPy users will never have to know about this, but it it is occasionally useful to see uh, uh, figure 8.2 for a, a graph of the data type hierarchy and parent subclass relationship. So yeah, this, this, this graph looks quite interesting. So this gives us the class hierarchy. We have the generic. The generic could be it could be a number, it could be a character, it could be a, a boolean, it could be an object. Yeah. Oh, that's the parent. Yeah, you're right. That's the parent. Yeah. And then you have the 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 the, the child. So we have the number. Number can be either it could be either an integer integer. And if it's an integer, it's uh on sign integer and sign integer. So I think that has to do with a positive and a negative integer, if I'm not mistaken. Sign or unsign, and then it could be inexact, which is a, a floating, which is decimals, or it could be a, a complex number, and then it could be a character. If it's a character, it's either a string or a Unicode. Uh, a Unicode is an example of what? Not, I'm not sure if I remember that. Uh, it could also be a boolean, which is like a, a true or false, a logic logical operator, or it could be an object. So this, this, this. I, I think this. Uh, 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 figure it's quite interesting. 
Yeah. So we move to the next section, the A point two, which is uh, advanced uh, array manipulation. Uh, oh, this we are just some replications I was doing. So, so advanced array manipulation. So there are many uh, ways to work with uh, arrays beyond fancy indexing, slicing, or pooling. While much of the heavy lifting for data analysis uh, applications is handled by higher level functions and pandas, uh, you may at some point need to write a data algorithm that is not found in. So, so basically he said that, I mean, it's good to go through this, but in, in most cases we might not be doing this, but you might have exceptional cases where in we'll have to write algorithms and it might be useful to know what some of these uh, functions do. So the first uh, array function that will be exposed is the, the, to reshape the array. Uh, so in many cases, you can convert an array from one shape to another uh, without copying any data. To do this, you pass a tuple indicating the new shape to the reshape array uh, uh, instant method. Previously, we, we, we've defined, we, we've mentioned that the data type, um, the we, we've mentioned the shape. We say the shape should always be a, a tuple. So that's why now he's reminding us that we can, uh, uh, to do that, we can pass a tuple indicating the, the new shape of the, uh, to the reshape array instance. So he gives an example. So suppose we created this array of uh, numbers from zero to, to eight. So of course eight, not inclusive. So if we apply the reshape function, we can reshape it to this uh, uh, dimension, four rows and two columns, and then we get this. So this is uh, quite handy. So the, the reshape function is quite handy. Yeah, so we reshape it to, to uh, uh, four by a four by two. So this is uh, uh, an array of, from zero to let's say 12, of course, exclusive mm -hmm. of 12 itself. So let's say array dot reshape to uh, three by four, a uh, four by three dimension. And then now he's introducing the concept of order. So we can order this array either using the C order. The C order just see like a, call, uh, a row major. Like we order it using the vertical uh, axis, which is the, the row or the Fortran order, which is the column major wherein the ordering is done using the, 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 the column, where, where the ordering is done using the column. Yeah. This is yeah, actually any... kind of a, kind of a, mm -hmm. the way we have to put the, assign the number for the each cell. So you can think about the each cell actually has the kind of a small spaces. Mm -hmm. Uh, assigned to the memory. That's mm -hmm. what they talk about the stride. And then, okay, so for example, this one is kind of like a, kind of like a, how, how many, like a one by eight kind of array, right? Mm. One single row and a column, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm. And then when we try, uh, no, no, not the eight column, 12 column, right? And then, when we think about this kind of order, like a four row and three column, actually how we can assign this number based on the this shape, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There is a two way you can do. First one is we have, we actually assign the number in order based on the row, like a first row, first the row has the three cells, right? So first mm. the three value gonna be assigned here. And then second row, another three, three cells gonna be applied here, et cetera. That's the row order, like a, like a, like a, like this. That's the, how we, how, how uh, C order gonna be uh, assigned the number for the new shape. This is actually what uh, base R Base are usually do like a C mm -hmm. order when they actually make a matrixes. 
it looks like this uh -huh. assigned number. Okay. Yeah. And then a Fortran order is a kind of a column order. Column order. That means actually we have a first column has a four cells, right? So first the phone number gonna be here. And then next the phone number gonna be the second column. So it looked like uh, how it looked like this. Okay. That's the how portal. Actually, base when when we try to do the base R, base R also has the same thing because the base R also has the two options, like a C order, like a row, and then mm -hmm. and then F order is column. Actually, mm -hmm. in the in the when you check out the matrix in R. Then when we create the matrices or array in R, R also providing those two options too. Okay. Yeah. When we try to fill the fill the value, assign the value or into the new shape, like a new matrices, there is also two options, like a C order or a portrait order. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Just thanks. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. So so he, he mentioned also that the default is the, the C order. Yeah, right. So, right. so the default is to see all this, or yeah, that something to, yeah. So it uh, gives an example: uh, a multiple uh, dimension array can be be, be reshaped. Um, mm -hmm. So we have the um, reshape, and we could uh, reshape that to uh, mm -hmm. two by two by four, which is which mm -hmm. is uh, which is this. Previously, it was yeah. four by two, and we can reshape it to. Uh, uh, two by four. You know, this one is actually how how it works. Like, okay, the first one, like a four four by two, right? Uh -huh. We have a uh, like a two and four, right? Uh -huh. And then and then we have to reshape the. Like this, right? So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, like a based on the C order, right? And then when we try to do the same thing, this one is also the C order, like a, this one. So we have a four cell into the first order. So this four number gonna be converting like this, one, zero, one, two, three. And then yeah. the other four, is four five six seven okay, like yeah. This. yeah yeah like a like a like a c order is the default so that's yeah, the hard work. The yeah yeah it is actually literally about the transforce right mm. yeah okay yeah so and, and also he mentions that one of the past shape dimension can be a negative like a minus one in which case the value used for that uh, dimension will be inferred from the data so from the data, then it will be in fact what uh, what what would be the appropriate dimension to use. Uh, an example here, it's uh, when we have uh, five and minus one. So using this, since this is a, a range of uh, fifteen, so it, it this is the most appropriate uh, um, like dimension it will give you. So that is if we use the minus one. Yeah. So we've mentioned this previously that the the array shape has to like be a tuple. Uh, in that case, it can be passed to reshape to. So we can uh, like uh, we we have this example. We have other arrays, and the, this is the the the, the shape. Um, when we call the dot shape, it gives us the shape is this, which is a tuple. So so we can um, array dot array shape order and then it will um, sort of uh, um, reshape the, the yeah it will it will reshape the the this order we have we have we have uh, this order array that we have created previously mm. yeah. 
So the opposite of reshaping, the opposite, uh, uh, the opposite operation of reshape from one dimension to a higher dimension is the typically is typically known as the flattening or the raveling, which is like the to like after you reshape the the data, you want it to go back to the like the flattened stage state or the way it was. Like this, uh, yeah. Example: This uh, um, a range of fifteen. When we receive it, we have something like this. So, if we want to go back to the flat case, where it is just like a, some uh, some kind of a scalar, but with a, 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 a row of zero. Yeah, so with like a row of one. Sorry, like a scalar flat. We can just call the uh, the the Ravel function, and it does that. Yeah, the Ravel function does that, or the flattening. So the, the, the only difference between the, the, the flattening method and the Ravel is that uh, the flattening method behaves like a Ravel, except it returns a copy of the data. That's it, that's the only difference. But the, the behavior will be the same, but the flattening method returns a copy of the data. But in any case, both of the, 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 the both methods uh, are used to undo the reshape. In a, in, a, in, a, in a way they are used to do to undo the reshape. So now he's trying to explain the difference between the uh, the C versus the Fortran order, which we have already discussed. Yeah, already discussed. So the key difference, the key difference between the C and the Fortran order, uh, the, the, and the Fortran order, is the way in which the dimensions are walked. So for a C or row major order, traverse higher dimensions first. Um, example, axis one before advancing to axis zero. And the opposite is for the, 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 the Fortran or the, or the column major. Yeah, any, any comments up to now? No, so we look no. at concatenation, concatenation and uh, splitting variables. Uh, so when we call the method numpy dot concatenate, takes a sequence like a tuple or a list, etc., of arrays and join them in order to uh, in order along input axis. So this is a key here along the input axis. It could be at axis zero or axis axis one, or depending on the data type we are working with. So we have an example. The uh, let's say the first array AR one and the array two. So we concatenate them at axis zero, which is at the row. Axis zero, which is the, the row or the vertical. And then we concatenate them at uh, axis one, which is the column. So this is quite interesting, but we could use other methods to do this. We could use the V stack for axis zero concatenation. And we can use the uh, H stack, which is like the horizontal, the V could be vertical stacking, which is ex exactly what this does. This does a uh, vertical stacking. So instead of doing that, we could just call the V stack method. For 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 this one, we could just call the H stack method, and they would all do the same thing. Yeah. So that is what he's explaining here. So split is like the opposite of uh, concatenation. When we want to split, on the other hand. Uh, slides uh, an array into multiple arrays along an axis, just like uh, concatenation would add the uh, uh, multiple arrays to one. So we go back to uh, the random number generation of the normal distribution, uh, standard normal of uh, zero, uh, five dimension of uh, five, two. And we have this. So we can split it. Uh, uh, like this, the first, the second, and the third in this uh, in this dimension. We can split it like that, and and yeah, so that is how the split behaves. So we just this array we have split it into these portions, where in the first is this, and then the second, and then the 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 third represents this. So the value one, uh, three pass to the NP split indicates the indices at which the split, at uh, uh, at which to split the array into pieces. So this is the indices at which we, 
uh, split, just like uh, slicing, when we are slicing, like we have the indices on uh, how we uh, make, make the slice. Yeah, so this uh, table could be very useful. Uh, basically, the table gives us uh, uh, array concatenation functions. Uh, so yeah, I think we have talked about this previously. Uh, yeah. So the, the H split and the V split, uh, convenient functions for splitting. Uh, like we had the slack, the stack, we have the V stack and the H stack. So we also have the V, v split and the H split. So he, he mentions this, which is a, a stacking helper the r underscore and the c underscore yeah these things they just work like the b stack and the h stack right mm -hmm. yeah I, I think they do the same thing like what the v stack and the h stack does mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. i don't know if you have any comments but i, I think they will behave the same like just like h stack and v stack like the the yeah. R underscore is just the the V the 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 V stack and the C underscore is just the H stack. Yeah, it's a row order and color model. So yeah. it is actually kind of a namespace, and you know, you can just uh, abbreviate that, that kind of function like R underscore C underscore instead, not using the H stack and A stack and B stack, like reducing yeah. the typing. So yeah, you yeah. Know, yeah, yeah, that's the thing. Yeah. Mm. So now he moves on to repeating elements like uh, tiles and, and tile and repeat. So two useful tools for repeating or replicating uh, arrays to produce a larger arrays are the repeat and the tile function. So repeat replicates each element, just like the name, replicates each element in an array uh, some number of times, producing a larger array. So we have this array of uh, range three, which is from zero, one, two. Uh, so that's the array. When we call the repeat to it, when we apply the repeat function, repeat three. So it repeats each element three times. Each element three times, which is uh, quite useful depending on the type of work one is doing. So this could this is also very similar to the concept of broadcasting that will come later. So by default, if you pass an integer, each element will be repeated that number of times. If you pass an array of integers, of integers, each element can be repeated a different number of times. So here is an example. Previously, we just call uh, the repeat with three. Now we are calling it with a. Uh, we pass an array like two, three, four. So it repeats uh, the first element two times, the second element uh, three times, and the last element, the third element four times. Because we in the repeat function we call an array. So multi multi-dimensional arrays can have their elements repeated along a particular axis. Yeah. So we could uh, uh, decide which axis we want the repeat to take place. Like in this case, axis zero, which is the which is the row axis. We 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 specify that. Yeah, we specify the repeat, but always the default is always the the row, the row axis, even if we don't specify it. Yeah. So tile is uh, uh, also similar to repeat. Tile, on the other hand, is shortcut to stacking copies of an array along an axis. Uh, visually, you can think of it as being akin to laying down tiles. Yeah, so when you are like laying, da down, laying down tiles, you just have a copy of that tile on the right or on the left, something like this. Like when a tile is laying down the tile, it's just a copy of that on the, on the sides or like that. So it, it, the, the concepts uh, seem to be very similar, the concept of repeat and, and tile. Mm. So here is an array. Uh, here is a two by two array. Uh, so when we said uh, when we call the tile method two, 
it uh, so it basically creates a copy of the original tile but on the right of it. I don't know what I'm saying makes sense. But yeah, it it's a, yeah. yeah, it's the kind of you just think about this one, like a like a tile, like mm -hmm. a, when you go to the restroom, like a, there is a tile like this, right? Mm -hmm. Keep continuously yeah. attaching to one another, right? Mm -hmm. So second one, uh, twice is uh, if this one is a unit tile, mm -hmm. and then we can put that unit tile to the to the low wise. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, so up here actually, repeat is a kind of a kind of an element element based approaches. But this one is actually kind of an array based concat uh, concat nation yeah okay yeah 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 thanks thanks mm. Makes more sense. Mm. Mm -hmm. so but now he's um so in this case here he's calling the the tile method but uh, mm -hmm. it's uh, using the, the two, 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 one. Is it that? Is it the the indices or what does this two one? Two, two is actually number of repeat. Mm -hmm. Okay, so mm -hmm. we in here it says we're gonna repeat twice. Tile, put the tile, put the tile twice, and then the first mm -hmm. one means is the row by row or maybe column by column, okay? Rather than the column. Row by row means is uh, the previously we actually in here, we, uh, in here we actually put this one by mm -hmm. row by row because this one is the yeah. one first row and then a second row, we go to the second row and then we put the tile here, yeah. right? Oh. But in this case here, it is actually, we are gonna, the, okay, here, these are the tile, okay? Yeah. Uh -huh. And then we repeat this one twice, but the thing is, what direction? This direction. The, the, column, the column direction. Yeah. So here uh, he's no. just using the yeah. default, right? He's just using the no, no. default. Which... Yeah, default yeah. is the column direction, actually. You default know? Is the row or default is Default is the column uh, tiling is uh, made by low. Uh, okay, low direction. Yeah, low direction. Yeah, the is low. Yeah. Yeah. So low that's why direction I didn't even like this. Here. Yeah. It doesn't even specify. Yeah. Yeah, yeah like uh, like a low direction. Yeah. But but when we put the put the one in here, mm -hmm. we're gonna changing the direction like a column direction like yeah. this way. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that's the kind of a uh, okay. Here is the tile, and yeah. then we put the tile down to the column one. Underneath it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. yeah. Thanks. And then in here, the second means law. Yeah. Uh, second means, I think that. Uh, so it could be no. a 3D. Maybe it's a 3D. This one is a three dimension. In that case, the, the two uh, might make sense. It might be uh, the third okay. dimension. In that case. Okay. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. In that case, yeah. it might not. Yeah. So he, he, now he's talking about the fancy uh, uh, indexing equivalent, the take and put uh, method, which uh, which has been discussed in the in the chapter. Uh, one way to uh, get and set subsets of arrays by the fancy indexing use using the integer array. Yeah, I was going through this, but uh, this this part was fine because this one we just like uh, um, so we're just applying the array to this int and the array is like a multiple of hundreds which we apply to this and we got this which which is quite 
say fraud. So, but here he is like there are uh, alternative uh, NDRA methods that are useful in the special case of making uh, selection only on a single axis or, or only on a single axis. Mm. So here, uh, how how do you understand this? Like, so we are, we are calling the 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 tick method, which basically. Uh, which basically uh, takes this, it just calls this back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, but the put method uh, has to go with a, with a, like a, an axis. So this 44, I, I was not getting it. Was it an axis or what, what, what does it do with the put method? Okay, let's see. The alternative NDRA array is the useful to the in a special case of the making selects only only on a single axis. Okay. Yeah. So array take the take the individual like this. Uh -huh. Yeah, which is fine. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Then the put then takes the individual but the 44, yeah. which is is it a is it an axis uh, that will not forty two axis I don't mm. Mm. so and the, then you can see the output how it looks uh, mm. uh, yeah yeah so I, I was trying to put my head on this but uh, I could not figure out what mm. it meant by this what does the put method it 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 makes some statement about it, it does uh, put does not accept an axis argument but rather mm this is into the flatten one dimension C order version of the array or oh. those when you need to set elements using an index array uh, on other axis it is best to use the this uh, like it is best to use the, the this bracket oh. based indexing so the put doesn't uh, accept an access argument, but mm. rather indexes into the flatten one dimension. Uh, yeah, okay. so I, 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 I could not get this put method. The take method was straightforward, mm -hmm. but the put method was not. Yeah, not, me, yeah, I, yeah, me either, yeah, it's a uh, Yeah, but anyways, of, like, yeah. next week when we get the IOS, we could uh, just yeah. uh, uh Clarify it. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So then it, it moves to broadcasting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, broadcasting governs how operations work between areas of different. So all, all this while previously we have been looking at uh, homogeneous shapes, right? So mm -hmm. now when we come to broadcasting, now we are looking at areas of uh, different shapes. So, so Areas of different shapes, then we apply the concept of broadcasting. He he clearly mentioned that this could be confusing. And when I was reading it through, it was I got confused at some point. <laughs> the simplest <laughs> example of broadcasting occurs when combining a, a scalar with an array, which is straightforward, like we have. We have this array from zero to five, and then we multiply it with a scalar of four. So what is happening here? Python is uh, numpy, what it does. It uh, it does broadcasting. So basically, here, so to do this, it does broadcasting. I, I don't know if this <laughs> makes explanation makes any sense, but to to do this uh, operation, like to multiply an array by a scalar, what it does, it does broadcasting. Under under like we don't see that 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 particular step of how it does broadcasting, but that is what it actually does. Because yeah, broadcasting it... is uh, just kind of a simple because it says it's a multiply four, right? Yeah. So if you can just think about the array mm -hmm. is the matrix, right? One, mm -hmm. zero, one, two, three, four, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you just uh, thinking about the in the mathematically just four like this. How yeah. we can do that? It it we gonna try to. Apply to the each elements multiply by four. Mm. That's the one of the one of the uh matrix function matrix 
algebra, right? Mm -hmm. So this is what is called the broadcasting. Because yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, this scalar value gonna be applied in matrix algebra, this scalar value gonna be applied all of the elements within the matrices. Mm. That's the broadcasting. Yeah, cause, uh, cause uh, we, in the mathematically when A is, A is like a A, B, C, D mm. as a matrices, okay? And then maybe I would say N is integer. Uh -huh. Okay, N A equals N A B C D. That actually go N A N B N C N D. This is a kind of a just kind of a lemma. Yeah. We actually we actually try to define this operation, and then this one is what is called the broadcasting. So n is the integer and also is the scalar value. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Not the not the not the vectorized value like a uh, with because uh, this n is the uh, no order, unlike uh, matrices. Matrices is has an order, right? Yeah, Row yeah. and columns. So, so if I yeah. if I understand broadcasting, what what is no. this? Like this is right, but in order to do the operation, it treats mm -hmm. And like a two because this a is a two by two, mm. so it, it 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 treats n like in a in a way like a, some kind of a um some kind of a matrix, which which is going to be like a, um maybe a two by one or something like this. Yeah, two by one is also the same. So yeah, so like it, it treats like n like a, that. Then yeah, and and multiply by n is. N A and B, right? Based on this definition. So these are the matrices as an A, and then mm. N is the kind of a scalar value. Mm. And also what is broadcasting means is the actual in here, the operation work between the array of the different shape. What does that mean is maybe if you have A, has a kind of a kind of a two by three kind of a kind of a matrices. Maybe for example, A B C D E F, right? And oh. then and then I would say B has the three by two matrices, which is G H I. J, K, L, okay? Yeah. What's the, what's the multiplication of the A go B in this case? How okay. this operation work? Yeah, we already know that based on the A, B, C, D, E, F, okay? And then G, H, I, J, K, L, right? This is the how, this is the operation, right? Yeah. How, how can we do this? Actually, two by three multiply by three by, uh, three by two matrix actually give us about the two by two matrix, okay? Yeah. How that works? Okay, here is a here is a result. We have a two by two matrix. This one and this one. Okay. First, we multiply each element correspondingly. That's the first element. So, A G plus B. I plus C K. That's the first element of the two by two. And then that one also goes to the second column in here. So A H plus B J plus C L. 
is the second one. It is the sum of the these things, okay? And then a uh, dg plus e i plus f k is the third one down here. Here, this one by this. And then last one is these elements by these elements. d h plus e j plus f l. That's the calculation. That's the how what is called the broadcasting. Um, I mean, I, no, yeah. I understand what you're explaining, but the way I understand yeah. broadcasting seems to be so because what you're just doing is like a matrix multiplication, which has to. Um, so what, what, as we go, you will understand the point I'm trying to make. Mm. I, I really get what you were, you were trying to explain. Yeah, that is the that is actually in 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 the in the Python that actually called the broadcasting. So maybe when you, I think that. Uh... So so he gives an example here. Let's let's oh. uh, look at look at the example. Oh. So you 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 have this you generated this uh, array which is like uh, four by three. Uh huh. And then you get the mean. The mean of uh -huh. the uh, the array, which is uh, so this is a uh, this is a one by three, right? Yeah. You, one by three, and you have a four by three. Right. Uh, let's see. Okay, hold on. So this one is. Okay, whatever we have, this is gonna be four by three, right? Okay, let's see about, let's draw the four by three metric system. Yeah. Here. Right? This is a four by three, right? Yeah, this is the array itself, a, the original array. Yeah, and then a mean zero, right? Yeah, the mean of zero, which is this Mean result. of zero means kind of like a, uh, Hold on. Yeah, this is a one by three. It's just a, it's just a, uh, it's a row vector. Yeah. Yeah, it's a row vector. This is a one by three. Okay. So it's a three, three, right? And then uh, mean zero is actually low. Uh, actually, uh... it's just one row and three, three columns. One, two, three. Oh, okay. Interesting. I thought that this one gonna be the four, not the three. So now so, to like do the demanding, he subtracts the two. Hmm. Like he subtracts okay. this one, which is a four by three from a uh, mm -hmm. from the uh, one by three. And he gets Maybe this. could you could you go to the Jupyter notebook and then could you type that one, please? Uh, I think I something like. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. So here. Yeah. So you, you see this. Yeah. Yeah. And then so we could we could even maybe let me try to get the shape of this to make it easier. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, uh, in, uh, That, that shape. No, I, I want to get the shape of it. Yeah. Mean, mean zero. Yeah. And okay. shape. That shape. Yeah. So yeah, it's a three. It's a, yeah. It's a three. So, okay. So what he's talking about broadcasting is we have to reshape it to make it uh let's say a a, a one by three or a three by one depending on this depending on the dimension of this, so that we can multiply. He said, this is what it does on the background, even though we don't see it. Actually, what mean zero means is the kind of like, a, okay, in this case, we sum up the all of the these things and then get the mean. Yes. And all of the this one, get the mean, mm -hmm. all of the these, and then get, get the, the mean. mean. Yes. Yeah. 
So, That's the how broadcasting look like because it's the three 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 shapes, right? No, so the broadcasting was done here. This was the problem was this because this the ARR is a four by three, and this is just uh -huh. a three, and then you want to do an operation on them. Ah, okay, gotcha. Yeah, you, you, you see the point. So that was the that was the issue. So now here you have he's saying that they have to apply some broadcasting. So which which is uh -huh. like what Python does is it reshapes this to a let's say a, a one by three or a three by one so that it matches this. Oh yeah, this one is actually I can explain that because uh, okay. yeah oh uh, yeah okay from this number mm. okay mm. what does this one this means is that this one actually has the three row right yeah and then there's no column yeah that's no column yeah so what does that means is yeah. From this value, mm. like uh, why how this one is calculated is yeah negative zero seven five nine three eight seven one eight negative minus minus point one three five nine seven nine four three yeah. actually negative and negative is the plus right. Mm -hmm. So we get the this value. And this one, okay, is 0 0.9021.9827, okay? Yeah, yeah. Negative 0 0.9982.3524. Yeah, no, and I understand your question. So, so yeah, because uh, it, is, it is kind of a, kind of a element by element kind of a kind of a uh uh understand your point so what, he, yeah. what 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 the reshaping does is what what the broadcasting does is this uh uh this this thing yeah it reshapes it to a three by one matrix yeah we have uh, these elements and then we have uh, these kind of array right yeah, so this uh our, this thing we have here, we just reshape it to a three by one. This is yeah. what it does, like to do the operation. It reshapes it. Like, yeah. yeah. It reshapes it to a three by one. And then like uh, three. Uh -huh. And then it does the the operation on that. Then yeah. then you can you can you can now you can do operation on this too. Because you have a four by three and a three by one. You will end up having like some kind of a four by one something like that. And then could you could you run the run the this this command which based one? on that one? Yeah. Well, which one? Sorry, this one. Yeah. Yeah, you have something like that. Okay. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. This one is does not update it. So okay. Yeah. 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 I think yeah. we're almost out of time. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I think that this one is uh, just kind of a, what just yeah, yeah, to yeah. say. So, is, so you uh, see, you see, you see, you see yeah. here, you see, you see, yeah. so isn't you see the diagram. So this is what we had, a four by mm -hmm. three. Mm -hmm. And then we want to multiply it by three, which yeah. is a scalar. So yeah. which is just this. So what it does, it adds mm -hmm. all this. Okay. And then it gives you this four by three. So this is what broadcasting does. Mm, so okay. this is what we have, like a four by three. We want to multiply yeah. it by three, the scale at three. So yeah. on the ground, this is what Python does and gives us this result. Mm. So yeah. the diagram is even much more clear. Yeah, because uh, yeah. that's what I came, what I'm going to say. So even if we have, it, we have uh, this only three, uh, one row and three column in this case, mm. This one is a keep applying to the all of the these elements. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. Uh, like uh, like like this way, yeah. and then that's the how it works like this. That's the what is called the broadcasting. Like a like a try to apply each element to the one by one kind of a corresponding yeah. relationships. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. 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 I think.
we almost yeah. out of time. But basically, this this is this all this stuff is just explaining the same thing. How the broadcast mm. and all. How yeah. It, yeah. It's explaining like this is a three D case. Now, if you have a three D yeah. case, how it does? Yeah. It still does the same thing. It will yeah, just replicate right. this. Yeah. This four by two. It will replicate it three times. Yeah. And then that is how the broadcasting is done. In case of the multiple array, yeah. Yeah. So okay. Uh, yeah. Maybe here. I think that you can you we can stop here and then uh maybe you can start. Could you go up a little bit? Yeah. Oh no no a little bit down a little bit down. Yeah, that one. Uh -huh. The broadcasting over other axis. Yeah. Next yeah. week we're gonna start from here. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. That's fine. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the, your explanation and then uh. Maybe okay, I think thanks, that we have thanks. a yeah we have a lot of things to cover next week so yeah, yeah I will see you next week then yeah let me stop the end yeah okay yeah just wrap it just let's call.